When you have $88 billion, you better travel surrounded by utmost luxury. Thankfully, the British royal family knows this far too well, as they actually allocate more than $110 million on this expense alone. So, let's have a look on what this massive amount is spent. The Royal Coaches just a week or so ago, we were treated to one of the rarest traveling methods the royal family uses, the Royal Coaches. The British Royal Coaches are not just a collection of historical and ceremonial vehicles used by the royal family. They are also a symbol of pomp, pageantry, and, let's be honest, a little bit of over-the-top extravagance. Over the years, the coaches used by the royals have become increasingly grandiose. First, there's the Gold State Coach, which was built for King George III in 1762 and weighed a whopping four tons. It's covered in gold leaf and features intricate carvings and paintings that tell the story of Britain's history. The coach is so heavy that it requires eight horses to pull it at a walking speed. Thus, today, it's only used for the crowning itself. King Charles rode in this coach from Westminster Abbey to Buckingham Palace after the coronation. He chose to forsake the tradition of using the Golden State Coach for the entire procession since the carriage is famously extremely rough and uncomfortable. Instead, the King opted for the Diamond Jubilee State Coach. The Diamond Jubilee State Coach is one of the most famous and impressive coaches in the British Royal Coaches collection. It was commissioned in 2002 by Queen Elizabeth II to mark her Golden Jubilee, which celebrated her 50 years on the throne. The coach was completed in in 2010 in time for the Queen's Diamond Jubilee, which celebrated her 60 years on the throne. Though the official cost was never confirmed, experts suggest the coach costs more than $2 million. The Diamond Jubilee State Coach is a stunning piece of craftsmanship, featuring intricate designs and luxurious materials. The coach is covered in gold leaf and features diamonds, emeralds, and other precious gems. This fairy tale like carriage is also adorned with carved woodwork, gilded metalwork, and silk upholstery. Six specially trained Windsor Grey horses pull the coach. This ultra-modern carriage is equipped with four comfortable and luxurious upholstered seats and has a range of modern features, including air conditioning and electric windows. The coach also has a hydraulic lifting mechanism that can raise the coach to a height of 2.4 meters, making it easier for the public to see the king and queen inside. The Diamond Jubilee State Coach is the most widely used in the royal family due to its comfort. However, the Windsors also have the Irish State Coach, built in 1852 and covered in rich red and gold fabrics. It was the go-to carriage of the royal family before the Diamond Jubilee State Coach was finished. It was used for all royal family ceremonies, including Parliament's state openings. But, alas, the Irish state coach has also been known to break down on occasion, as it did in 2014 when it was being used to transport the Queen to the state opening of Parliament. But let's be real, the main appeal of the royal coaches is their sheer extravagance. They're covered in gold leaf and jewels, with plush seating and ornate decorations, and when they're used in a procession with the horses and footmen in their full regalia, it's a sight to behold. Still, the top speed of a four-ton carriage pulled by six to eight horses is not very high. Thus, these state coaches are used only for ceremonies and processions, where pageantry is above all. When the king or a member of the royal family has to go to do business, they prefer a much more luxurious and practical means of transportation. Royal Limousine The British Royal Limousine is a luxurious car the royal family uses for official and ceremonial events. The current model in use is the Bentley State Limousine, which was specially designed and built for Queen Elizabeth II in 2002. The Bentley State Limousine is a stunning vehicle with sleek black exterior and elegant lines. The car is equipped with a range of luxurious features, including plush leather seating, air conditioning, and a state-of-the-art sound system. The limousine can also be customized to suit the occasion. 
For example, the interior can be decorated with flowers or other decorations for a wedding or other special event. But what sets the British Royal Limousine apart from your average luxury car is the special features designed specifically for the royal family. For example, the car features a raised roof line, allowing the Queen to enter and exit the vehicle easily, even while wearing outrageous hats. Now the King can also enjoy entering the limo without taking off his crown. The car is also equipped with special lighting, so the face of the royal inside is always well lit for photographs. Of course, being a royal car, the Bentley State Limousine is also incredibly secure. The car is fitted with bulletproof glass and armor plating, and the tires are designed to run even if they're punctured. The car also has a range of top-secret security features. I can only imagine what kind of James Bond-style gadgets are hidden inside. One thing the car has inside is a refrigerator section, with at least three pints of blood inside. No, not for drinking. Although Charles does have some resemblances to a vampire, the blood is for emergency medical attention, for the king, if the unthinkable happens. Unsurprisingly, this embodiment of ultra-luxurious security and class is worth a staggering $15 million, a small price to pay for traveling in utmost luxury. But despite its many impressive features, the British Royal Limousine is not immune to the occasional mishap. In 2016, during a state visit to Germany, the car broke down on the tarmac of Berlin's Tegel Airport. That's why the royal family has a garage full of other luxurious cars. Luxury Car Collection Along with the Bentley State Limo, in the Royal Mews, where the royal cars are kept, there are at least a dozen ultra-luxurious vehicles. Before the Bentley State Limo was introduced in 2002, the royal family used an ultra-luxurious and majestic Rolls-Royce Phantom IV. The family actually has three of them, each one costing $2.6 million. These high-class limousines are now predominantly used by heads of state visiting the UK and other senior royal family members. Although built nearly 70 years ago, these extravagant limousines feature more luxurious amenities than most modern cars. Another showstopper in the royal family's collection is their Aston Martin Lagonda. This astonishing car was the prized possession of the late Prince Philip, who was a well-known gearhead. Though the vehicle usually goes for anywhere between $75,000 to $115,000, the Prince's is worth more than half a million. In addition, the Duke of Edinburgh was known to drive a Land Rover Freelander and a Land Rover Discovery, both in the characteristic Edinburgh green color scheme. The Royal Muse is also home to a highly luxurious, ultra-rare Jaguar Daimler Double Six, worth $86,000. That's not the only Jaguar in their collection, as in 2018, the then Prince Charles bought the first all-electric car, Jaguar I-Pace even got a custom paint job, which Jaguar then stopped offering to other customers. Driving around in ultra-luxurious and fancy cars is fine for inner-city travel. Still, knowing how well-organized and traffic-free London is, the royal family can't set a wheel outside Buckingham Palace without some top-notch security on the line. Security the British royal family is one of the most high-profile families in the world, meaning that security is their top priority. From armed guards to state-of-the-art security systems, the royal family has a number of measures in place to keep themselves and their properties safe. Let's start with the most visible aspect of royal security, the guards. You've probably seen them before. These stoic-looking guys in the tall black hats and red coats, standing outside Buckingham Palace or marching down the street in a precise formation. These are the members of the Queen's... <coughs> the King's Guard, and are responsible for protecting royal residences and ceremonial events. These formidable-looking fellows are just the tip of the iceberg. 
There are also plain clothes officers, armed response teams, and even helicopters and boats on standby in case of an emergency. The royal family also has their own security team, known as the Royalty and Diplomatic Protection Department, which provides 24-7 protection to the king and other senior members of the family. In addition to physical security measures, the royal family also uses technology to keep themselves safe. Buckingham Palace has a state-of-the-art security system, with thousands of cameras and motion detectors monitoring every inch of the property. The family also uses encrypted phones and other communication devices to keep their conversations private. Of course, all of this security comes at a cost, and it's not just financial. Members of the royal family have to give up a lot of their privacy and independence to stay safe. They can't just go out for a stroll in the park or pop into a local pub without a team of guards and advance planning. Even their cars are equipped with bulletproof glass and other safety features. But hey, it's not all bad news. Think about it. With all that security around, the royal family probably never loses their keys or forgets their password. And if they ever need to get out of a boring meeting or social event, they can always pretend that their security team just received an urgent message and they have to leave immediately. What the security can't take care of, however, is the dreadful London traffic jams. So that's where the motorcade comes to save the day. The Motorcade a typical royal motorcade can involve dozens of vehicles, including limousines, SUVs, motorcycles, and even a horse-drawn carriage or two. The late Queen's motorcade was especially impressive, with a whole fleet of cars and security personnel ensuring her safe passage. But the motorcade isn't just about the show, it's also a serious business. With the royal family's high profile and the constant threat of terrorism and other security risks, the motorcade is crucial to keeping everyone safe. So what goes into a royal motorcade? For starters, there's the lead car, usually a police vehicle or a car with a special siren and lights to clear the way. Then there's the VIP car, which carries the royal family member or dignitary. After that, a ton of support vehicles follow, such as a mobile command center and a medical team, as well as motorcycle escorts to help clear the way and keep the motorcade moving smoothly. And let's not forget the plainclothes officers, who blend into the crowd to keep an eye out for any potential threats. As you can imagine, having such preparations for every trip is not as fun as it sounds. Moreover, there are some strict rules the family must follow when traveling. For example, all family members should always have at least one blood bank of their blood type nearby. Moreover, the two family members next in line for the throne should always travel separately. As you can imagine, William and George often disregarded this rule. But while Charles was the crown prince, he was never seen traveling with William in the same car, train, or plane. As you can imagine, this parade costs the Windsors a top dollar, or should I say, a top pound. So when they travel outside London, they go for a much cheaper option, their ultra-luxurious private train. The Royal Train All aboard! If you thought the royal family's cars were impressive, wait until you see this luxurious mode of transportation. The Royal Train is a symbol of elegance and sophistication, with a long history of transporting several kings and queens, as well as some other members of the royal family in style. The first royal train was introduced in the mid-19th century, and it's safe to say that things have come a long way since then. These days, the train is a state-of-the-art marvel of engineering, complete with luxurious amenities like plush seating, private bedrooms, and even a dining car. One of the most impressive things about the royal train is its sheer size. The train can be up to nine cars long, each serving a different purpose. There's a luggage car, a kitchen car, and even a car that's been converted into a fully functional office for the monarch. But of course, with such an opulent mode of transportation comes some unique challenges. 
For starters, the train can't just pull up to any old station. It requires special tracks and facilities to accommodate its size and weight. And let's not forget about the logistics of planning a train journey. From scheduling stops to coordinating with local officials, there's a lot that goes into making sure everything runs smoothly. But despite the challenges, the Royal Train remains a beloved tradition. It's a chance for the Royal Family to travel in comfort and style and for the public to catch a glimpse of their favorite Royals as they pass by on the tracks. Yes, trains are cool, but unfortunately, Great Britain is an island and the seas are not particularly well known for their railway tracks. So when going abroad, the King and his family must use a plane. But don't worry, it's not just any regular plane. The King's Flight Okay, I lied. Members of the British royal family are well known for traveling on commercial airlines. This is especially true for William and Kate, who prefer to mingle with the ordinary folk. The King, however, doesn't have such freedom. Instead, he's forced to take one of the several highly luxurious VIP aircraft under the command of 32 Squadron, the former Queen's flight. Until 2015, the royal family opted for a small BA-146 aircraft which was customized to fit all the luxuries a queen needs. At this point, only the queen and the crown prince were free to use the plane at will, but never at the same time, for security reasons. Since 2016, the BA-146 has been decommissioned, and today the family uses either the new Airbus VIP RAF Voyager or the two Dassault 900LX. The first one is a highly modified Airbus A330. MRTT, customized with high-end amenities, a luxurious interior, and top-notch defensive capabilities. In addition, the plane's interior has been specially designed to cater to the needs of its VIP passengers, with plush leather seating and spacious cabin areas. One of the most notable features of the VIP RAF Voyager is the private quarters available for use by the royal family or government officials. These private areas include include comfortable beds, private bathrooms, and even separate dining areas for meals. In addition to the private quarters, the VIP RAF Voyager offers its passengers a range of dining options. There is a dedicated kitchen area on board, where personal chefs can prepare meals tailored to the passengers' preferences. The in-flight entertainment system is also top of the line, with a selection of movies, TV shows, and music available on demand. Passengers can also enjoy the use of high-speed Wi-Fi and communication systems to stay connected while in the air. Of course, security is also a top priority on the VIP RAF Voyager. The aircraft has advanced security features, including secure communication systems and bulletproof glass. A team of trained security personnel is also on board to ensure the safety of the passengers. This aviation masterpiece cost around $160 million to the Windsors. However, they also bought two highly customized Dassault 900 LX, each worth approximately $50 million. The interior of the Dassault 900 LX has been customized to meet the needs of its VIP passengers. The plane features a spacious and comfortable cabin with plush leather seating individual climate control, and a range of entertainment options, including TV screens and music systems. Just like the VIP RAF Voyager, the Dassault also features a private kitchen, as well as some well-equipped offices. With a range of up to 4,750 nautical miles, the Royal Dassault is the go-to choice when Charles wants to go to Australia or New Zealand across the world. Still, for closer flights within the UK or in neighboring countries, the King prefers the much more comfortable King's Helicopter Flight. The King's Helicopter Flight Why would anyone go to an airport when he can get a lift from his own backyard? That's a question the King doesn't have to answer, as he can just call the Royal Air Force and order one of his two highly modified Sikorsky S76C++ to land in Buckingham Palace's backyard and give him a lift. Each of the choppers costs $7 million without the modifications. 
The helicopters feature an all-white exterior, with the royal coat of arms prominently displayed on the tail. The interiors of the helicopters are spacious and luxurious, with seating for up to 10 passengers and plenty of luggage storage space. The cabin of the helicopter is designed with comfort and convenience in mind. The seats are upholstered in premium leather and are fully adjustable, allowing passengers to find the perfect seating position. There are also individual air conditioning and heating controls, ensuring that each passenger can adjust the temperature to their liking. The helicopters are equipped with advanced navigation and safety features, including GPS systems, collision avoidance technology, and state-of-the-art communication systems. In addition to the standard features, the helicopters also have several custom upgrades that cater to the specific needs of the royal family. These upgrades include a secure communication system allowing for confidential conversations to take place on board and a range of entertainment options, including TV screens and audio systems. Yes, traveling in such luxury is reserved only for the king and his family. Still, they have much to learn from King Salman of Saudi Arabia when it comes to traveling in style. Care to learn how the patriarch of the richest royal family in the world travels? Just click on the video to your left.